Hello and welcome to EduDose, your trusted platform for pharmaceutical learning. Today's topic is highly relevant in novel drug delivery and biomaterials. I'll be exploring gel types, especially hydrogels and organogels, their formulation techniques, key ways we characterize them, and I'll wrap up with a real-world case study. Let's dive in. First up, what exactly is a gel? Gels are semi-solid systems made of two phases, a dispersed phase, which could be solid particles or a polymer network, and a continuous phase, which is a liquid typically water or oil. What makes gels cool is their viscoelastic behavior. They're not quite liquids, not quite solids, more like somewhere in between. Now gels are classified based on their solvent. If the solvent is water, you get a hydrogel. If it's an organic solvent, it's called an organogel. And if you dry out a gel, you'll hear terms like zero gels or aerogels. Let's zoom in on hydrogels. Hydrogels are three-dimensional hydrophilic polymer networks that can soak up and retain massive amounts of water. This makes them super useful for things like topical applications, eye inserts, wound healing, and even tissue engineering. The polymers I usually see in hydrogels fall into two camps, natural ones like alginate, chitosin, or gelatin, and synthetics like PVA, PEG, or HEMA. To make a hydrogel, you select your polymer, do some cross-linking either chemically or physically disperse it in your solvent, adjust pH or viscosity, and sterilize it. Hydrogels really shine in burn dressings, like Aquacell registered trademark, in ophthalmic inserts, and for controlled drug release, even insulin delivery can be hydrogel based. Switching gears to organogels. Organogels are semi-solid systems where the liquid phase is an organic solvent and a gelling agent forms a 3D matrix. Think of lecithin in isopropyl myristate or sorbitan monosterate with paraffin. You melt the gelling agent, stir in your organic phase, let it cool to form a gel and if needed, add your active ingredient. Organogels are important for transdermal drug delivery, like diclofenac organogels in cosmetics and in delivering lipophilic drugs. Now how do I characterize gels? Here are key parameters for viscosity. I'd use a Brookfield viscometer to check how much water a gel absorbs that's the swelling index done gravimetrically. Drug release? I'll set up a Franz diffusion cell. pH is checked with a pH meter, spreadability by slip and drag methods, and for morphology, it's SEM or optical microscopy. Finally, I'll use DSC or TGA for thermal properties and a rheometer for deeper rheological insights. Let's bring all this to life with a case study, the hydrogel-based wound dressing, Aquacel Registered Trademark Ag Plus Extra. This uses hydrofiber registered trademark technology, mainly sodium carboxymethyl cellulose, and contains ionic silver for an antimicrobial effect. It absorbs wound exudate, forms a gel that fits the wound, and steadily releases silver ions to kill bacteria. The result? Reduced healing time, a moist environment, and easy removal with minimal pain. Hydrogels like these combine biocompatibility, controlled release, and moisture control making them perfect for chronic wound care. Looking ahead, the future's exciting smart gels that respond to pH or temperature, injectable hydrogels for cancer and stem cell delivery, even AI-assisted formulation for personalized medicine using 3D bioprinted gels. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to EduDose by Dr. Sadish Polshetty War. Drop your questions or ideas for future topics in the comments. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, like, and share it with others who'd benefit. See you in the next video.